expats who don't learn the local language. Now, depending on what your persuasion is, you're going to have different emotional reactions to that title. Uh, it's not unlike people, if you see a headline with Trump in it, people who are pro-Trump are going to be going, yeah, 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 what are these people going to say against Trump? And people who hate Trump are just going to block themselves up and expect the worst from whatever that headline is. So, expats who don't learn the local language, what does that sentence mean to you? Well, I can tell you that actually over the past 25 years, my whole career has been built around this principle of expats who don't learn the language in one way or another. Now, first of all, what is an expat? Uh, we'll be looking at that. So make sure you watch to the end of this because I'm going to be bringing in a story that I was directly involved with that goes around this topic and it resulted in murder. Um, uh, it was pretty harsh, but it goes to show what the downside of not learning the local language is. So anyway, um, what is an expat? Honestly, what's the difference between an expat and a migrant worker? I guess maybe what the color of your skin, your salary? Uh, I don't know, but anyone, if you're not living in the country of your birth, you're a migrant. So expats slash migrant workers. But it seems that we have two words in Thai. We've, we've got like expat and then Tangdao is a foreigner, but it's usually used for sort of the, the lower end um, workers like uh, from Burma or Cambodia that come across to work where expats um, are foreign as well, but they're working in offices and usually making a lot more money than the locals. So yeah, there's some issues in that too. But expats who don't learn the local languages uh what are the pros and cons there are some pros so let me start with that if you are an expat and you come here you are probably coming here on a package you've been brought into the company um, and brought into the country and you've probably provided housing if you've got kids the kids are probably going to go to international school now these international schools in thailand uh you're looking at around you know 40 50 000 us dollars per year for a kid to go to uh, a lot of these schools um and so these are huge packages and way beyond what your normal local is going to be making and so if you're in this bubble and you've got your secretary and you've got your employees, you've been put in there. Well, you're not hired to learn the language. You're hired to run the business. And that's understandable. Um, so you're here also, if it's, if it's on a contract like that, for a limited time. So maybe two years, three years. So the investment that you would usually use in learning the language, you don't have that uh, luxury of time. There is a downside now. Uh, and let, let me get to that. Oh, okay, one, one other upside is that you can play the ignorance card. So because you don't speak the language and because you don't really understand the culture, you may, but ignorance plays in your favor. Um, you can get away with doing things that people who speak the language or should understand the culture um, wouldn't get away with. And especially locals wouldn't get away with it. So this is one benefit of not speaking the language, but this is the downside. If you don't speak the language, you are at the mercy of the team that is placed around you. And I use that word uh, very selectively, the team that is placed around you, whether it's in China, whether it's in Thailand, whether it's in Indonesia. Um, let's take China, for example. You go to China and you're usually given an interpreter. Now, by Western standards, an interpreter is a profession and they're going to work fairly and justly. Now, the interpreter that's given to you, I can pretty much guarantee that they do not hold allegiance to you. They hold allegiance first and foremost to their country and then to the local company that once you're gone, they're still going to have to be loyal to. And so what happens, and I've seen it happen in China, um, I've seen it happen here in Thailand, that when you're going through negotiations or uh, you're even meeting contacts, people establishing your business, speaking with government officials, the message is filtered through the interpreter. One, it's filtered by their own views and perceptions of the world. 
It's filtered by what their understanding is of what the other person's saying. And most scarily, it's filtered in a way that the things that are dear to them, so that is <clears throat> the country, it's their country, um, and the company that's hiring them, because it could be dangerous to say anything that could jeopardize that country, that company, or the relationship, um, or the country. It could be dangerous in China to speak out against the country. So they're going to filter it in a way that is going to make them look good, even if it means totally changing the message by the time it gets to your ears. And so this happens. How can you make business decisions on that? Um, in Thailand, um, I see it all the time. And so people will, um, the Thais, you even see it in the questions when they ask a foreigner, you know, how long have you been in Thailand? Do you like Thailand? Why are they asking this question? Do you like Thailand? They're asking it because they just want to hear good stuff about the country. So if they're interpreting for you or if you're placed in a company and you've got a PA given to you, maybe you've got an HR director, you've got um, a team that communicates with the team on the ground, they will be filtering things in a way that um, comports with their ideas of the world, whatever their political alignment is, whatever their position in the company is, what their factions are, we call them Pak Puop in Thai. And you're going to be getting a skewed view of the world and the company, which is your world while you're on your expat posting um, through their eyes. Now, you might be able to put a couple of people in place and think, oh, no, no, they're going to be able to be not biased or anything. Bullshit. Um, there is always bias and there's always pressure. Um, and a lot of the time, this pressure or these biases are shielded from the foreign or expat managers that right are up the top. And that can even happen over tens of years. Um, foreigners living in a country and decide, well, I can get away with not speaking the language. And there's this whole world going on beneath their nose that they just are totally oblivious to. So expats who don't learn the language, you're going to be oblivious to that because you're always going to be dependent on somebody under you and filtered information coming up. Um, the other thing is that even if you get that information, you don't necessarily know the cultural implications of what that means, not just linguistically, but culturally. And so you could be getting the same message um, and make different decisions based on that because you're not actually getting it. Um, people might be thinking, oh my God, I'm telling him clear as day. Why doesn't he get it? And he goes and makes this other decision. It's because um, your lack of understanding of the culture um, and the language is causing you to receive the wrong signal that was intended. Um, so let me get to this story that happened. This is how I got into oil and gas. Um, probably about oh, over 15 years ago now. So I used to be a Dale Carnegie trainer. I came out, set up my own consultancy business, and I started getting um, called into companies to run cross-cultural workshops and um, you know, getting the, the local teams on board and building uh, bridges between the expats and, and the locals. And one oil and gas company said, uh, Stu, look, could you come down and we just want you to run one of these you know, business development workshops, speak with the local team. I take them in little groups and the deal is that I will not reveal anything to the person that hired me um, that will pinpoint individuals. It's my job just to listen and hear what's going on. So I sit there and I go down there. We traveled about three hours to get down there and I'm listening to groups, some individuals, some groups. I take about 20 minutes each um, uh, interview session. And I got to about the fifth group and a bunch of people came in, knock, 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 uh, in the company. Now, this was, uh, I don't want to say the country even, but it was a, a Western oil and gas company that had started a fabrication plant um, here in Thailand. And so these people came in and they say, look, we're not going to speak to you right now, but can you come back at two o'clock? But don't come here. Can you come to... Um, this other place and it was on another site close by so anyway I okay it's a bit dicey I was much younger then and so yeah why not and so come two o'clock I didn't tell anyone where I was going I went and sat there knock on the door um, and they said it's like this you probably haven't been told yet but somebody was murdered well we actually had the murder they 
hired a hitman, and it turned out that somebody in the expat group that started this company, his partner, his girlfriend that he made in Thailand, um, that he'd met in a bar, and a wife of another expat who had connections, uh, well, both of them had connections to northern mafias, um, started to be manipulated by their wives, and they started to, their wives started to get people from their provinces to move to the eastern seaboard of Thailand and set up uh, employment agencies and set up um, uh, procurement supplies. So they would be supplying stationary cars, everything to them. And this turned into these whole huge rackets where fake um, documentation of people's credentials were being given. Every Basically, there was just the money flowing through them. Even residential properties that the expats were living in were, it was all a scam. They were getting money from these um, guys and basically any bit of budget that could flow out of the company, um, they were getting it somehow. And you can imagine the local mafia down there, they weren't happy. And so it turned into a mafia turf war where you've got procurement, you've got the um, employment agencies sending the labor in from up country, which were fake credentialed labor, which is totally dangerous as well. Um, the housing, everything, the, the limousines, the cars, the registration, everything was corrupted by the wives. The original point were the wives of these two expats who had no idea. Well, maybe they didn't, but they didn't speak the language. They didn't understand the culture and they had been, been manipulated every step of the way. And this got to the point where they couldn't handle it anymore. There was such conflict on the ground that they hired a hit. And they took a hit out on this one person at the end of um, uh, Project Milestone. They all had dinner. They came up from dinner. Motorcycle came around as everyone was walking out of the restaurant. Bang, bang. They were dead. And they wrote five names down. They said, if you can't get these people out of the organization within X amount of time, um, we actually have a fund together to take these people out too because we just can't go on like this. Um, these were people who associated with the locals, aka and the local mafia, versus the northern mafia that had come in. I thought, holy crap. And so I went back and I um, was just stunned all the way back to Bangkok, about three and a half hour drive. And I spent the next three days writing a report out. I finally sent my confidential report to the person that hired me. He read it and he think, thought, holy shit what is this? I can't give this to my boss who was sitting in an office overseas. He did. And finally, it, the message came back was basically, well, yeah, I guess that's what's happening. We figured something like this might have been happening. And it turned out they all knew um, kind of what had happened, what was going on. They didn't tell me, um, but it came out on the ground. This all happened because from day one, the foreigners came in, they didn't speak a word. The people who started to creep into their lives spoke the language and it was in their interest to not have the foreigners understand what was going on because they could be holding meetings, doing anything below their nose. And by the time it got up to them, yeah, it's, oh, everything's okay, boss. Everything's fine. It's all pink and dandy and, and, and everything's, nothing's going on. Next thing, there's a murder. Um, this is an extreme case. But it goes to show you that somebody saying that, oh, it's okay, I'm, I don't need to the language, I'm just here to do my job. Well, you could be basing then all of your decisions on incorrect information. And in the end, data is everything. We live in a world of data and the data includes the information that comes up from the ground, what you're hearing from the local markets, um, what you're hearing from your customers. And if you're in a foreign country, those are all people who speak the language that you probably should be speaking. So I would say, is it okay not to learn the language? Yeah, you've got to run a company and to learn a language to a really good degree, you've got to put in the time. But I can tell you, if you do learn the language, it will have a profound night and day effect on the way that you operate. Um, even in the circles that you meet and rather than having this insular bubble of a few handful of people, even for 20, 30 years in the country, you open up to the entire country now and you can be influenced by all of those people rather than a select few. Anyway, I hope this was an interesting discussion. Let me know in your countries, if you're out of Asia, in other countries in Asia, how are 
um, expats uh, in that country? Do they learn the local language? I'm surprised in Vietnam, it seems even less people learn Vietnamese in, in the expat community than say expats in Thailand learning Thai. Uh, I'd love to know. Let me know in the comments below. What's you, what are your thoughts? What are your gut feelings? Should expats learn the local language? Should they even be called expats? Let me know, subscribe, like, and I'll see you on the other side. Bye. Thank you.